the Stuart 7A model steam plant. Part 14, making a new eccentric sheave that is independently adjustable. At the top of the image on screen at the moment is the original eccentric strap and eccentric sheave that was fitted to the engine before I fitted the reversing gear. And on the left is the eccentric sheave after I machined away the part that I didn't want. Originally, to save time, I was going to use the sheave from the original eccentric. But it didn't fit, it was too big for the reversing gear strap. I'll just have to make a new one. The original eccentric sheaves were machined as a pair. I'm going to make one that's independently adjustable, and here I'm measuring the diameter. All I need to do now is find a suitable piece of metal. And here it is, a piece of steel from my box of small bits of steel. And now it's over to the lathe where I'm fitting my independent four-jaw chuck to the boxford. And to tighten it in place, I generally use a piece of hardwood on the jaws like this. It's never a good idea to use the chuck key to tighten the chuck in place. The alignment begins. I'm adjusting each jaw until it goes midway between the two outer lines. And the four jaws should end up being equidistant from the centre. Here's a piece of steel going in place, a quick nip up of all the jaws to make sure it's tight. By rotating the chuck and advancing the lathe tool towards the work, you will find out whether it's in the centre or not. For this job though, it just needs to be, well, approximately in the centre, because once I start turning it, I'm not taking it out of the chuck, and of course the turn part becomes exactly the same all the way down. I would, however, recommend that you try and get it somewhere near. With a DTI or dial test indicator, it's possible to get the piece of metal 100% accurate in the jaws of a four-jaw independent chuck. But it's really not necessary for this job. In this clip, I'm turning the outer diameter to match the measurement that I obtained using the micrometer from the original eccentric sheave. And I'm not getting a very good finish on this piece of steel. It's not free-cutting steel either, it's quite a hard piece. And the reason for this, I think, is because the lathe tool has done quite a lot of work and the tip's a bit blunt. It's time to turn it round to a clean piece. But before I do that, I think I'll take all the roofing cuts. Because the finish at this stage is unimportant. When I need a nice finish, I'll change the tip and try again. Applying some oil to the job always helps, and it's about time I did that, so here we go. This is steam oil. This clip shows the quality of the finish after I change the tip, and as you can see, it's a lot more even and quite shiny. As I mentioned earlier, this is a hard piece of steel, it's not the free cutting stuff. So it should be hard wearing. I've changed the lathe tool for a parting tool, for the simple reason I need to cut this to shape, leaving a bit sticking up in the middle. Not a very technical term, I know, but the bit sticking up in the middle of the eccentric sheave holds the eccentric strap in the correct position. By using a parting tool like this, it makes the job easier. A quick check with the micrometer tells me that it's not quite the right size yet. It's getting closer, and once the part is turned to the correct diameter, it's very important to make a note of what the numbers are on the cross slide. A final check with the micrometer tells me that this is the correct diameter. All I have to do now is leave a bit of a gap that's the bit that sticks out that fits into the slot in the eccentric strap. And turn this next piece of the eccentric sheave to the same diameter as the first part. That's why it was very important to make a note of the numbers on the hand wheel. By the way, I forgot to mention that I am making two eccentric sheaves, and why am I doing that? Well, in case I mess up the first one. I always do this, it seemed over the years to be quite a good thing to do, because if you make a mess of it, you don't have to start again you have a second eccentric sheave on the same piece of metal. And I'm also turning the middle section for a greater distance so I can get the micrometer in between the two sticking out bits. And that's about it for the plain turning aspect of this job. In this clip I'm trying one of the eccentric straps in place to make sure that it fits, and thankfully it does. And it fits on both of the eccentric blanks. In this clip I'm using a file and I'm filing the original steel. I'm making this mark so I can refit the part in the chuck with the mark against the original jaw. Onto the bench now with the eccentric sheave blank. 
and I'm marking the position to drill the hole for the crankshaft. This hole will be 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and 9 sixty-fourths of an inch from the center. This will give the correct throw to operate the valve. In this clip the part is back in the chuck in the same position that it was originally. I'm adjusting the position of two of the jaws until the center drill makes a mark on the line in exactly the right place. And only when I get that part of it right, I turn on the power and center drill the hole. Once I'd done that, it was time to drill the hole using a twist drill which is one imperial size under 5 sixteenths of an inch. You will notice now that the part is running eccentrically. And slowly and carefully, first of all, I drill the hole until it looks like this. If the part is small, it's OK, but if you're using larger parts and spinning them eccentrically, you need to go much more slowly. Now the lathe is in back gear because I'm reaming the hole. This is a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter reamer. And all being well, I should end up with an accurate 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter hole all the way through these two eccentric sheaves. When reaming, it's important to go slowly. If you go too fast, the hole's likely to be oversized, and I don't want that. And that's it for the four jaw work. So I'll refit my three jaw self centering chuck. First of all, I'm going to show you something which is very wrong. Here I am at my lathe, not a care in the world, and what I need to do now is part off one of the eccentric sheaves. This is a very bad thing to do, but I thought I would show you how to do it. As soon as the parting tool breaks through into the eccentric hole, it jams solid. I'll show that again in slow motion this time. The reason the tool post seems to move is because it's actually lifting the entire saddle off the bed slightly. I would not normally show this for a video or any other reason, particularly if the lathe was more powerful. But as the drive belts are slack, there's no great damage done. This seems to be a much safer way to do it. Remove the tool and use a hacksaw and speed up the video so it doesn't take too long. Note the large piece of wood underneath to protect the bed from the hacksaw. In this clip I'm taking a facing cut across the front of the eccentric that is still on the piece of bar. And that way, if I make a mess of the first eccentric sheave, I can come back to this one and it will be more or less machined properly. It just needs sawing off, turning round and machining on the other side. This is the eccentric sheave that I'm going to use on the engine. I'm taking a facing cut on one side for two reasons. One is to clean up the saw cut marks. And once I've done this side and then turned it over in the chuck, I can size the thickness to the finished dimensions. And that, my friends, is the end of this episode. I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.